Let's now put in the final touches to our IC to truly discern it from all the other parts. Okay, the first thing we have here is that the icon is wrong. Here in Inspector, it's showing the icon from the part it was made from. And if you did a search, you wouldn't know the difference between the two. So we'll right click edit that. Go to icon and we'll use the breadboard image. And we'll save that. Right, uh, you can see our icons changed now. Now we'll come and look at the metadata. Now this title here is the title that will be in the inspector. So we want to change that so we know one from the other. So we'll just put a C on the end, custom. Author, you can do what you like there. Description, if we float over it, descriptions in the inspector as well. 8-bit load ship. Let's just change that to test IC. Now the label U is the grouping label that we use to discern parts in our bill of materials. We'll just come down here. You can see that's U1. We'll just show the part label. Next. Next, just as an example, we're going to change that label to an S, so you can see its effect. We have 74 series. This is a 74 series part. So all 74 series parts will come up in the inspector and can be chosen here. And as we can see, ours is not in there. This is the original one we made it from. So we have to discern that from the others. So we'll we'll change that in the type we'll call it CC just as an example so you know the difference between the title and the type so DIP 16 package group so that's alright and we'll just save that for now file save close that uh, notice how I was editing this one, not the one on the uh, on the board, because if we did the one on the board, it would not be, it would just be this one part. It wouldn't be like all generic parts from this one. We'll just grab that, put that on there. See, we've got S1 here. Just for an example, we'll change that to S2. You can do it here or there. We'll show the part label. S2, you can do it from here as well. Just change it back to S1. These changes are just for this part on the board, it's not the generic one. Okay, with this part selected, we'll come down to the type. And we have our old part. But we don't have our new part. So let's do a quick restart. Then save the sketch, save my parts, reopen. Breadboard, mine, we are part on. And we see here now the type is correct. And we can switch back to the old one. Just undo that. Let it undo. So our, our part is now part of the family and can be easily selected here. Here we have the part name blank. And if you go into the ed editor, and edit this one because it's the base one, We can actually put a specific number in there to be a specific part, or we can leave it blank, and then people can just type in what they want in the inspector, and that one part on their drawing will change, not the generic one that was in your bin. Uh, on a side note, this variant here gets automatically changed in Fritzing when you make a part from another part. It will automatically increment up from what it's already got inside the program, and assign its own number.
so you don't really have to worry about that like if you if you save this core part six times as a new part you will have six different variants that's all that is okay now we'll look at connectors we'll just close that for a sec now if you hover over pin 1 it says Q1 output pin 1 now we'll go back to edit and we go connectors and this Q1 output pin 1 and you can change this to whatever you like we'll just call this one uh, stick for a joke just to see what happens a uh, number of connectors as usual you can add more connectors let's make 18 press enter come right down to the bottom there's, there's the extra pins starts at zero so you've got two extra pins you can delete them here Then we're back down to 16 pins just very general you can really work, you can work this out quite easily we'll just save that I'll save ok save we use this core part so we'll drag it on and see what happened part label S2 because it's the second one we'll just hover over our pin that's Q1 stick so that worked now let's go out of the box and get it even more crazy we'll go back to our general part we'll edit in the metadata we're going to call this an LED and see what happens we'll file save that Then we'll do a quick restart, we'll close this, don't save the sketch, reopen, uh, back to breadboard and we'll go to LED, then we'll come down to inspector, uh, we have to go package, and package, we have a dip 16 now because the package was a group in LED so we'll just click on that and we get our IC it's now in the LED family this adding parts to a family makes it a bit quicker to select stuff from the inspector here it saves you chasing around in the bins so it comes in handy sometimes on a side note we couldn't actually get our type variant with the CC adjustability to get directly to the part because if you look at the LED it doesn't have a type category and because it doesn't have a type category you can't specifically pick our custom part with the CC extension this one here so you finished all your views and you've added your custom text identif identifiers the only thing left is to test the part to make sure it complies with everything. Uh, we'll just get rid of the LED. First thing I do is I grab the part and if it's supposed to fit on a breadboard, make sure it connects with all greens. Then I'll drag it up here. Make sure these pins are connecting with wires. And changing to green. We can even add an IC to itself. Check those connections. Seems to be alright. Then we go schematic view. Then we'll just check some of these traces, just grab them. They go solid, it's gone green. Seems to be fine. And they go to the end. You might even want to try all of them just to be safe. seems to be alright now we'll go to PCB view and we have our S1 and our LED fake and we can uh, pull traces, they go green do directs so 
seems to all be fine. Now I do a Gerber and check these holes accurately. I'll just delete the S1. We go to routing. Select all traces. Edit. Delete. Got one more to go. Delete rat's nest. Whoops, another one. Then we'll go file, export for production, extendable Gerber, set a file, new folder, folder test, IC, select folder, then we go to that folder, this is our folder, inside here we'll look at the drill.txt. Two size holes, the big hundred there, which is our center, our center example hole. Forty thou holes. There's one hole in the T1 group. The T1 group is the hundred thou. The T100 group has these. There should be sixteen. Yep, sixteen. This part is horizontal, so there should be two Y numbers. Is 1473 and 1773, and if you work it out, there's 300 thou between the two, and there's only two different y numbers, so that's right. We'll just look at a couple numbers on the x. This one here is one inch 154 thou from this or from the side origin point. This is one inch 254 thou, and you see there's 100 thou between them. There should be pairs, so if we come down, here's another 154. Come further down, another 254. So they look right. You can even copy all these into Excel, then use a couple bits of maths to subtract everything from each other to check it all. But it looks right from there. Now we'll visually inspect. And we'll go to GURB V. We'll go File, Open Layer, we'll go to our folder, Test IC, and the copper top first. We'll open that. 16 pins. Just check the holes are on them on there. Open layer, drill.txt open. Yep, all the holes are showing up. Then we'll go through every single layer again. Open copper bottom. This purple one, we turn it off and on. It's there. File, open layer, top silk screen. Bottom silk screen won't have much on it. That's why nothing shows up. Then we'll open top silk screen which should have all the writing oops we open the bottom again just get rid of that file open layers silk top it's there it all looks right file open layer mask you won't see much because there's only like a little bit of an edge on it we'll put it on the top so just a little edge around there Everything looks alright. We'll open this up here. Grab our ruler. Go from this hole to this hole. It's saying 98.7 mils or thou. So it's about right. You can go from far end to far end. Should be 700. We've got 698. Looks pretty right. Here to here. 299, which is supposed to be 300 thou, that's right. I'm using edges because it's easy to get them accurately. If I try to find, find the center, try to go from center to center, it's not going to be as accurate. That's why I use edge to edge. I have another Gerber viewer, so I might even check it on that one again. But from the uh, drill.txt file, it looks perfect. From this, it looks right. 
So I'd say the part would be okay for production. This pretty much brings this part to a close with the last categories, icon, metadata and checking. So hopefully this tutorial will give you enough of a guide to actually make it for yourself.